It's quickly approaching. I'm talking about the dreaded peak of hurricane season. And already this week, we saw the Atlantic heat up. Joining me now is NBC6 hurricane specialist John Morales to talk about this year's season. And it's been a doozy, John. Yeah, you know, I mean, we've had the development of storms much earlier than you'd expect in an average year. I mean, nine of them mm -hmm. uh, by the middle of August. I mean, that's, uh, that's a lot of activity. At the same time, it's interesting, Jackie, not a lot of these have become hurricanes so far. Uh, we've had nine, and yet only one has reached hurricane strength. So fingers crossed that that trend continues. So is there anything out there right now that we should be concerned about? And I'm talking about South Florida. Yeah, from South Florida's perspective, uh, the short answer is no. I'm happy to report. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot out there to be concerned about. I mean, we've had systems to our east and systems to our west, right? Uh, remember, Harold hit Texas, and that turned out to be maybe a good thing because they really needed to break a drought down there uh, in South Texas, and it looks like, like it's going to help do that. And then all the slew of storms that formed in the middle of the Atlantic, Emily and Franklin and Gert. This has been a historic year because of those temperatures, those high temperatures, heat advisory after heat advisory. And of course, the concern about the surf temperature and the warm waters that ordinarily is a feeding ground for these hurricanes. Is that is what's most of concern right now? Oh, totally. And, and it's the reason why uh, the uh, seasonal forecasters, whether it be NOAA or uh, Colorado State, upped mm -hmm. the number of storms and hurricanes that they were forecasting for the season, saying that the second half of the hurricane season would be even more active than the first half well, was. It almost doubled its prediction, right? It, 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 yeah, it, and you know, it, normally the adjustments are small. This mm -hmm. time the adjustments have been huge because the scientists are very concerned about what you just mentioned, the very hot sea surface temperatures that are occurring, occurring because the background reason is, of course, climate change and global warming. And on top of that, we've had some other meteorological short term reasons as to why water temperatures are so hot and potentially driving uh, strong hurricanes. We also saw a big storm hit California. Something like that hadn't happened in, I believe, over 80 years. Is this something that we could potentially see now more often? You know, there's no telling, Jackie. Uh, it, it, the storm in California definitely is not unprecedented. I mean, you just said it. It happened 80 years ago. It's just rare, right? It's rare that they get something like this, uh, that, that a, 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 a tropical system can reach still with tropical characteristics as an official tropical storm. And, and that's what just happened. And one of the strongest ones in, 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 on record, although they once did in the 19th century have an actual hurricane wow. hit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it has happened before. And, and I wanted to pivot very briefly, Jackie, to the Atlantic because, yes, we're worried about the uh, sea surface temperatures. But I think what's going on here with the intensity of the storms is that that upper level wind shear produced by El Nino might be playing a role. It might be uh, those westerly winds might be strong enough mm. to keep the storms from becoming too strong. That's not to say that we're not going to get strong hurricanes. We probably at some point will as we reach the peak of the season and then head into the latter portion of the season. But uh, for now, what's been observed is that those winds are having an impact. You mentioned El Nino, and we've heard about the phenomena, El Nino, La Nina. Can you tell us exactly what is El Nino? Sure. Well, it all starts with the trade winds in the tropical Pacific. Uh, when they become weaker, you get a lot of the hot water that you find in the western tropical Pacific, close to Indonesia and all these beautiful tropical islands. All that hot water starts to mix in further towards the east, closer to the South American coast. If the water becomes hotter at the surface, air starts to bubble up. It becomes buoyant. It, it rises. And as the air rises into the upper atmosphere, it changes the jet stream all over the world, not just in the Pacific, but it, it has repercussions in the Atlantic, too. A stronger jet, st jet stream over the Atlantic means those stronger westerly winds that produce the shear that hopefully keep mm -hmm. storms in check. John, thank you, as always, for joining us here on Impact. Great to be here.